Hello, good evening. <clears throat> Who's joined me tonight? I don't see a name, I just see one person who's joined, so maybe you can wave or uh, make a, put some comment. It would be nice to know who's watching me. I'm trying to see if there are any comments, no, no comments yet. Alrighty, so I am going to begin um, chapter 6 today. Good evening. Hi Daisy. I'm on day 7 today of um, reading excerpts from the book The Untethered Soul the Journey Beyond Yourself by Michael A. Singer. I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this. I've been doing it for six days and I'm quite uh, uh, ecstatic about the experiences that I've been having every day. Uh, it's something else to read a book and then it's something totally different when you read uh, for knowing and then when you read for learning to share. And that's what's happening for me. I've read the book before. But this time around when I'm reading it and then selling, selecting excerpts, uh, what I would, would like to share. And then when I'm doing it live, spontaneously, the kind of um, experiences that I'm going through and through the day, what is happening, what I'm able to practice, what I'm not, where I'm falling, if I'm falling, whether I'm getting up, not getting up and all of that. So that's, um, that's what's been going on. Right. So. Yesterday's chapter, chapter 5, what we talked about in part 2, um, like I I keep saying every day, this book has three parts. We finished part 1. The part 1 talked mostly about getting to know the voice in your head, which is the voice of your mind, and how it progressed in four chapters, how we progressed to, to learn how to witness. So we become the witness and the voice is the subject. Um, which is which is talking based on the experiences outside or inside the thoughts and emotions. So how do we have that subject object uh, relationship is what we talked about in the first part. The second part we started with experiencing energy. Yesterday's was infinite energy. It was very it was a lovely um, chapter. It talks about chakras. Uh, and how the energy flows and how we end up blocking them in today and uh, you know uh, how we end up blocking the chakras and things. It doesn't go in depth of, of every chakra but it does mention about mainly it was about the energy flow, the infinite energy, right? Um, and today we're going to go a step deeper. Um, into the secrets of the spiritual heart. That's what uh, today's chapter topic is about. Now I'm just uh, giving a heads up for whoever's going to be watching this. It's a slightly longer uh, chapter or I would say longer read today in the sharing. It's going to be a slightly longer read. Uh, um, I thought first when I was reading it that I'll stop at some point and then you know uh, pause there rather and then continue tomorrow. However, when I started reading the whole thing, I realized that I think it's best that we cover the whole thing today. So I hope you enjoy whenever you watch this right now or the recording later. So here we go. The Secrets of the Spiritual Heart, Chapter 6. Very few people understand the heart. Here we're not talking about the, uh, just the organ. In truth, your heart is one of the masterpieces of creation. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal instrument. It has the potential to create vibrations and harmonies that are far beyond the beauty of pianos, strings or flutes. You can hear an instrument, but you feel your heart. And if you think that you feel an instrument, it's only because it touched your heart. Your heart is an instrument made of extremely subtle energy that few people come to appreciate. 
In most human beings, the heart does its work unattended. Even though its behavior governs the course of our lives, it is not understood. If at any given point in time the heart happens to open, we fall in love. <laughs> if at any given point in time it happens to close, the love stops. If the heart happens to hurt, we get angry and if, it stop, if we stop feeling it altogether, we get empty. All of these different things happen because the heart goes through changes. These energy shifts and variations that take place in the heart run our life. You are so identified with them that you use the words I and me when you refer to what's going on in your heart. But in truth, you are not your heart. You are the experience of your heart. <clears throat> the heart is actually very simple to understand. It is an energy center, a chakra. It is one of the most beautiful and powerful energy centers and one that affects our daily lives. As we have seen, an energy center is an area within your being through which your energy focuses, distributes and flows. This energy flow has been referred to as Shakti, Spirit and Chi and it plays an intricate part in your life. You feel the heart's energy all the time. Think about what it is like to feel love in your heart. Think about what it is like to feel inspiration and enthusiasm pour from your heart. Think about what it is like to feel energy well up in your heart, making you confident and strong. All of this happens because the heart is an energy center. The heart controls the energy flow by opening and closing. This means that the heart, like a valve, can either allow the flow of energy to pass through or it can restrict the flow of energy from passing through. If you observe your heart, you, will, you know very well what it feels like when it's open and what it feels like when it's closed. In fact, the state of your heart changes quite regularly. You can be experiencing great feelings of love while in the presence of someone until they, they say something you don't like. Then your heart closes towards them and you simply don't feel the love anymore. We have all experienced this, but what exactly is causing it? Since we all have to experience the heart, we might as well understand what's going on in there. Hi JT. So let's try to um, go a little deeper to understand what this heart is all about, the heart chakra, or like he calls it, the spiritual heart. <clears throat> We begin this analysis by asking a fundamental question. What is it about the structure of the heart center that permits it to close? What you will find is that the heart closes because it becomes blocked by stored, unfinished energy patterns from your past. Different experiences happen inside because of how you take in and digest the world as it passes through you. Form itself does not come into your mind or heart. Form stays outside, but it is processed by your senses into energy patterns that your mind and heart can receive and experience. For example, what it means by form cannot in uh, come inside into the energy field. It's like when you look at a beautiful flower. If you just look at a flower, okay, so your mind will register it as what kind of a flower. It will register it, the details. Uh, the color, the size, uh, so on and so forth. The feeling is whether it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, and the, all the other senses, your visuals, your smell, where it is, the, you know, the, how the, the environment is, all of that is all registering inside and all your senses, you know. So that's what it means, that into energy patterns that your mind and heart can receive and experience. So you've experienced the flower through your senses, and through your mind giving it names and thought patterns and your emotions giving it feeling patterns. Okay. If the energy patterns that are coming into your psyche create disturbance, you will resist them and not allow them to pass through you. When you do this, the energy patterns actually get blocked within you. Now again, let's say for example, we're driving somewhere and you happen to see an accident. Okay. It's a, it causes a disturbance, so we'll block it. But have you realized that if you happen to see it, it'll keep, it may keep playing inside, your, inside you for quite some time. It will give a very uncomfortable feeling. 
and your thought may goes like oh my god that is terrible this that da, 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 da. it just keeps going so but that's when you know it gets blocked now this part is very important okay uh, the overall system of perception is meant to take things in allow you to experience them and then let them pass through so that you are fully present in the next moment while this system is in a working operative state you are fine and it is fine you are simply having experience after experience they are passing into you awakening you and stimulating you they are actually having a profound effect on you you are learning and growing your heart and mind expanding and you are being touched at a very deep level so if you uh, you know if you let's say if we recollect uh, small children babies uh, everything is so new for them and they like wide eyed and excited and they taking in everything they're absorbing everything through all their senses so that's you know it, and it's it's just their mind and heart is expanding at that time what it mean and that's what happens to all of us all the time how aware are, are we the, what, that's what's happening or how we get caught up that's the object and subject relation what it means to live life is to experience the moment that is passing through you and then experience the next moment and then the next it's a phenomenal system when it is working properly if you could live in that state you would be a fully aware being every moment would be a stimulating moving experience because you you would be completely open and life would be flowing right through you but that's not what happens inside most of us let's say for example you're driving down the street you know and you you're seeing the trees and it's all passing through you with no trouble at all and then something comes in that doesn't make it through let's say for example it's just uh, the the kind of the one example that michael's using here uh, he talks about let's say it's a car that looks similar to your girlfriend's car he's talking about here uh, a girlfriend's car and the moment you see that you get pulled back into everything that happened with the girlfriend in that car etc etc so so it but it was a car just like all other cars wasn't it no it wasn't just like all other cars to you let's look carefully at what happened at the mental level the impression didn't make it through it didn't pass through what impression not the one that happened with the girlfriend the one that right now while driving uh, a, a a car that looked similar to the girlfriend's car that did not pass through it got stuck there because you went off into the memory okay you no longer notice the rest of the trees your heart and mind are fixated on that one car even though the car is gone you've got yourself a problem here there's a blockage an event that got stuck which event now he's referring to not the car that went by now but what came up what was that emotional block that happened uh, with the girlfriend at that time something happened inside that has left this past experience unfinished what happens to that experience that didn't make it through specifically what happens to the image of the girlfriend's car if it doesn't just fade away into deep memory like everything else at some point you'll have to stop focusing on it in order to deal with something else like the next stop light what you don't realize is that your entire experience of life is about to change because of what didn't make it through you life must now compete with this blocked event for your attention and the impression does not just sit in there quietly you will see that your tendency is to think about it constantly this is all in an attempt to find a way to process it through your mind you didn't need to process the trees but you need to process this because you resisted it it got stuck so it's your it's your inner energy that is now trying to get your attention to process what was stuck that got blocked because the energy is not able to move around freely uh ma'am need to call yes manat i missed your call i was busy today um today is a sunday uh, it's my off day also so i was busy doing personal stuff so yeah maybe you can message me tomorrow okay so we can get back to this 
Long term, the energy patterns that cannot make it through, you are pushed out of the forefront of the mind and held until you are prepared to release them. These energy patterns which hold tremendous detail about the events associated with them are real. They don't just disappear. We think that we've forgotten about those things or, you know, we're okay. But if you actually haven't released it, then it's not gone. They stay inside and become a problem. <clears throat> These patterns may be held within you for a very long time. A lot of us have experienced that. This is really interesting part now. It is not easy to keep energy together in one place for long. As you willfully struggle to keep these events from passing through your consciousness, the energy first tries to release by manifesting through the mind. This is why the mind becomes so active. When the energy can't make it through the mind because of conflicts with other thoughts and mental concepts, it then tries to release through the heart. That is what creates all the emotional activity. When you resist even that release, the energy gets packed up and is forced deep into deep storage within the heart. That unfinished energy pattern is called a samskara. This is a Sanskrit word which means impression. Okay. A samskara is a cycle of stored past, past energy patterns in a state of relative equilibrium. It is your resistance to experiencing these patterns that causes the energy to keep cycling around itself. There is no other place for it to go. Ghumrai, ghumrai, andari ghumrai, andari ghumrai. I mean, uh, you, won't, you won't let it go. That's very interesting. This packet of cycling energy is literally stored in your energetic heart center. It may look to you like you have handled the situation and that you have no more issues with that experience. You didn't know what to do, so you resisted the energy and it got stored in the heart where it could fall into the background and not be bothersome. While it may seem like it's done, like it is all over and gone, it really isn't. Every one of the samskaras that you've stored is still there. Everything that did not make it through you from the time you were a baby all the way to this moment is still inside of you. And this is what ever so often uh, some of my friends ask me and I think they know who it is. What is it that you keep doing so often? You're constantly working on yourself. There's so much, how much inner work, how much inner work, right? So look, that's what it is, right? There's something or the other that's blocked and some, you know, from when, from childhood, from birth, and I, I do womb healing work. So my own, when, you know, I go all the way into my fetus stage uh, and things like that. So there's, and then that is just this lifetime. What about all the other lifetimes? So it's just something or the other that keeps coming up and then, you know, you become aware of the block and then you want to release it and work on, around that. It is these impressions, these samskaras that encrust the valve of the spiritual heart. That encrustation builds up and restricts the energy flow. Now that we have understood where the blockages within the heart come from, we have answered the structural question of how the heart gets blocked. You can certainly see the potential for impressions to build up to the point where very little energy can make it through. If they build up sufficiently, you will find yourself in a state of depression. In that state, all becomes dark. This is because very little energy is coming into your heart or mind. Eventually, everything appears negative because the world of the senses must pass through this depressed energy before it gets to your consciousness. But even if you aren't prone to depression, your heart still gets blocked over time. It doesn't always stay blocked, however. Depending upon life's experiences, it can open and close quite frequently. What is This leads to a very important question. What is the cause of these frequent changes in the state, uh, in the state of the heart? It is related to the same stored past impressions that cause the blockages. The stored energy patterns are real, actually programmed with the specific details of the event that could not pass through. It has that event's vibration. It even retains your level of sensitivity about that event. 
Years ago, for just a few moments, an event took place. And now, several years later, it changes the energy flow through your heart and your mind. If something just, you know, triggers it, it just comes through. No wonder the heart keeps opening and closing. The energy that's stored there is real and it interacts with the flow of current thoughts and events. The dynamics of this interaction cause the vibrations that are stored as samskaras to get activated even years later. And on this, I would like to share what's been going on with me uh, as briefly as possible. Yesterday, if you watched my video, you must have noticed at some point when we were talking about the heart and talking about love and things like that, I had a moment of breakdown over there. Because like I had shared yesterday, yesterday afternoon something happened uh, I, and that uh, brought about you know, a lot of memories from a decade ago and I, uh, I was going through this whole very interesting uh, experience, that's all I can say right now because there were pockets where I was completely breaking down, uh, you know like emotionally, I could feel the pain in the heart center and my body was like really losing its energy and I was crying profusely and then my mind I could you know my mind was just completely taking me through uh, all those kinds of things as how could this happen how could this happen it happened before look what's happened and so after a few minutes I just stepped back because I was almost reaching a point of breathlessness and um, in a way, my body was giving me a sign to step back and then I got into the witness space and then I looked at myself and what was happening. And then from that space, I watched the thoughts and I, I took that information as to what was, you know, then blocked in my heart chakra uh, 10 years back. And then it was easy. So today, yesterday, I was going through this whole thing of watching you know, and then experiencing, watching, experiencing the entire day, evening uh, went off it, that I did the live. Today, it was now, then I got into the witness and I sat there quietly and listened to the thoughts, listened to the, watch the emotions, wasn't tearing up or breaking down as much. There were moments of that, very, very few moments. But when that was happening, I was letting that happen because that was a release as well of energy. And then I caught the thread that where did this start? It wasn't something that happened 10 years ago. Even that event 10 years ago was triggered by something else that had happened way long back in my childhood. Right. So that's where the blockage had started for me. So I sat with that and worked with that and released it. And then, then I thought about the 10 year back event. And then I thought about what happened yesterday. And the effect, the impact of it was much, much, much lesser because I was able to work on that impression or that samskara, I was able to release that. Okay, so that's what happens uh, when, you know, it's a, uh, when a blockage is there. Uh, what he says is, uh, sorry. So... Sorry, I've just lost the page that I was in. Yes. So samsaras, samskaras get activated even years later. And they affect your life. It opens like a flower and begins to release the stored energy. All this information is stored into a tiny energy bubble within your heart. You can feel the fears and the insecurity of a five-year-old even when you're 60. What is happening? So for me, I'm not 60. Uh, I'm a little, uh, quite younger than that, actually, not little. But yes, I did remember uh, when I sat this morning to do my work, I did remember something that was that had happened to me when I was seven. That's one of the things that, that triggered. And then all the memories where all uh, that pattern kept repeating up until yesterday. And that was it. I was like, finally done. No, not happening again. I'm going to release this now. Uh, it is important to realize that most of what you take in does not get blocked. Okay, so it's not like everything you take in gets blocked. There's a lot of it that doesn't get blocked. The only ones that get blocked are those that cause either problems or some extraordinary sense of enjoyment. Now, this is very fascinating for me. Okay, 
if it causes causes a lot of disturbance pain anger da 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 all of that i can understand the energy getting blocked this was really interesting that extraordinary sense of enjoyment also causes a block and excuse me uh, listen to this you store positive impressions too when a wonderful experience happens to you it doesn't make it through because you cling to it clinging means i don't want this one to go away and he gives a very in- interesting example um sorry i'm just checking if my phone is charging yes so clinging means i don't want this one to go away he he told me he loved me and i felt so loved and protected i want to keep reliving that moment <sighs> imagine we think holding on to i mean you know happy memories holding on to them is good play it back for me over and over again you you, you hold it on for that clinging creates positive samskaras and when these are stimulated they release positive energy okay no problem in that hence two kinds of experiences can occur that block the heart so even though it is releasing positive energy it is still blocked in the heart you you you're holding on to something and it's not flowing you're either trying to push energies away because they bother you or you're trying to keep energies close because you like them in both cases you're not letting them pass and you're wasting precious energy by blocking the flow through resisting and clinging the alternative is to enjoy life instead of clinging to it or pushing it away i like this part listen to this if you can live like that each moment will change you if you're willing to experience the gift of life instead of fighting with it you will be moved to the depth of your being when you reach the state you will begin to see the secrets of the heart the heart is the place through which energy flows to sustain you this energy inspires you and raises you it is the strength that carries you through life it is the beautiful experience of love that pours through your whole being this is meant to this is meant to be going on inside you at all times the highest state that you have ever experienced is simply the result of how open you are if you don't close it can be like that all the time don't sell yourself short this can go on all the time Un- unending inspiration unending love and unending openness that is the natural state of a healthy heart allow the experiences of life to come in and pass through your being if old energies come back up let go of them be happy which has been stored down there for all this time has the opportunity to make it through you do anything just don't push it back down of course it hurts when it comes up it was stored with pain so acknowledge that you have to decide if you want to continue to walk around with stored pain blocking your heart and limiting your life the alternative is to be willing to let it go when it gets stimulated don't make decisions based on stimulated blockages learn to be centered enough to just watch the stuff come up your heart will become accustomed to the process of releasing and cleansing just let it all happen get it over with just like the physical body purges bacteria and other foreign matters the natural flow of your energy will purge that stored patterns from your heart your reward you live in love and it feeds you and strengthens you see your eyes on the high sorry set your eyes on the highest state you can imagine and don't take them off if you slip just get back up it doesn't matter i go through it up and down up and down but i get back up the very fact that you even want to go through this process of freeing the energy flow means you are great yes absolutely you will get there just keep letting go that is the end of chapter 6 the secrets of the spiritual heart so how was that for all who we stayed on and heard please do leave a, a comment or two hi anil hi kanika Hi Lavanya. Hello Shweta. Ha, ah, lovely people here. Thank you so much. 
for joining. I don't know who all are still here. But yes, that is the end of chapter 6. It was a beautiful experience for me to go through it even more while I'm uh, reading it out to all of you. Tomorrow's topic is transcending the tendency to close. We're going to go further deep into how we can go beyond the tendency to close. Like we spoke yesterday that we think we, we close because it's, uh, it protects us from getting further hurt. But actually it doesn't protect. It only ends up blocking the energy flow. That protection and all of that is uh, what the mind thinks. It doesn't help. It doesn't help. It hurts when you're releasing it because it is the hurt that got blocked. So when it is being released, yes, it hurts. But trust me, it's worth it because once you've released it, that feeling of liberation <clears throat> and then when your <clears throat> sorry and then when your heart is filled with uh, that pouring of love energy you're just filling it up and then you start overflowing and then it's coming out of you and radiating all that love and you're experiencing life moment to moment it's so worth it so worth it so Talk, talk to somebody, reach out to somebody. You don't have to do it alone. You're not alone in this. We're all there. We're all connected. But go through it. Clear it. Release it. And then live life. Okay? So, until tomorrow, 10 p.m. Thank you again for joining. Uh, I will see you to listen and share, to read and share with you some more excerpts from the book, The Untethered Soul. Thank you for joining. Love you all. Good night.